right. Hello, everyone. This is our last UWM Tech Team meeting for the year. Can you believe it? We made it. And um, thanks for joining us. And I'm sure there will be some more joining us. So, But until then, let's just uh, take a moment in prayer mm. and recognize that in this moment, we have an opportunity to let go of what has happened today already and just simply allow everything that is distracting and moving us out of this perfect moment, just to let that go and be present. And as we move into today's meeting, we're very conscientious about our thoughts and feelings around the idea of live streaming, its purpose, the positive, the negative that comes with it. And we're trusting that each and every one of our experiences will help us guide us in this discussion. For those who are watching it later as a recording, it shall be a guidance in the learning experience for them to be able to make the decisions they need to, to help their community to address the life streaming question more fluidly and more in depth. We're grateful for each other, for what we bring to the table, and for the knowledge and the ex expertise that we have as an opportunity to express ourselves in Christ and in divine order. And so it is. Amen. It is. All right. So um, I think we decided last time <clears throat> that we are going to talk about live streaming. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, because I had to ask Lane, and uh, <laughs> um, here's Lane, and we had a discussion before about it, but I think this time we wanted to address it really from a perspective, not as a challenge, but as an opportunity. So I will just open the floor for anyone who would like to Get us started. Could I take a moment, Jean-Marie, to uh, introduce uh, Mike Davis, who is sure. our um, ministry coordinator for Unity Church of the Mountains in yeah. Middlefield, Georgia. Okay. Yeah. Hello, well, everyone. Hi. Welcome, Mike. If you want to uh, say a few words, just be mindful this is recorded and will be publicized on our tech team website and on uh, Unity South Central, but you're okay. certainly welcome to just share a few words. All right, I will hold down the dirty jokes, but otherwise, here we go. Yeah. Thank you all. Well, welcome. Um, you will see we have um, you. So Eldon, Lane, and I, we all come from Unity Fort Worth. And um, I'm the senior minister there, Eldon and Lane are both on the tech team. I'm like co-leading the tech team. And I've been, Owen is from Unity of New Braunfels in Texas. Ah, okay. And he is the most senior next to me on this team. Um, I've been presiding over this team for now seven, almost eight years. So mm -hmm. it's been quite some time and probably time for me to step down at some point and uh, let someone else take the lead. Yeah, so um, again, um, today's topic is live streaming. Um, last time we talked about Shaq Groverland's um, presentation on live streaming and his challenge um, that live streaming may not be for every ministry, um, but we're not going to go into that this time. This time we're just going to look at the positive ends, you know, what does live streaming uh, give us that we would otherwise not have? And how does live streaming help our communities to sustain in into the future? And just by way of background, uh, Mike was with, he was the, he led our group that on uh, July 29th, I believe of this year, when we also heard Chad's uh, presentation. Yeah. So, so he's fully versed in uh, 
Yeah, I, I prefer if, I mean, it's up to you guys, but I don't like to repeat myself. So I'm quite happy to not even go into Shad's presentation. Fine with us. And um, just focus on live streaming in general. I think we all got the gist of his point, which was uh, either do it well or don't do it. Is that a fair summation? Well, that's only one of his points, right? Yeah. Um, and I think that's the reason why this tech team even exists, that we are trying to help smaller ministries understand what's really relevant, you know, where to save money and where not to try to save money and then have just a bad product and what to focus on. I think the, the, the more important point <clears throat> that he made was that not necessarily every ministry should have a live stream. And, um, you know, so that's really where I want to, I want to flip it, right? So I want to, rather than looking half glass empty, I want to look at the other end and say, why should every ministry have a live stream? Can we say something about that? And I'm, I'm happy to talk about the drawbacks. You know, what are the drawbacks that we have experienced by providing a live stream? In somewhat of an ironic uh, timing, maybe it was nothing ironic to talk about the time, uh, we received a check. Was it anonymous, Mike, or did no. we? Hmm? No, it was not anonymous. Um, this is the second time we've received a, a check and a nice card from a couple in another town who watch us every week and they are very blessed by what they see. And they mentioned specific things that, that I said in the talk. So that felt like a, a good affirmation. Yeah. The other thing I, I would note is that when we first started live streaming, it was kind of a necessity because COVID was first starting and it was pretty much Bob and me and my wife with, with an iPhone. And we've gotten better and better over the last couple of years. And now we put out something that I feel proud to look at and have people look at. So wherever you might be in the process, there's, if you keep working at it and, um, you know, have a team of dedicated people, it will get better. Yeah, for sure if you know what you're doing right so the, the key is yeah. you don't know what you don't know so that's really and uh audio video technology is so complex um that i think even if you have the best people in place if you don't have the knowledge base mm -hmm. and don't have someone who is willing to do the research you will basically maybe improve to a certain degree, maybe you improve improve in depth, but not necessarily in breadth. So because um, even if, for example, a lot of people don't understand the very simple basic that audio is more important than video. If you don't know that, then it doesn't matter how much money you put in cameras and video production and slideshows and everything, if your audio continues to be bad, you will still lose people. Yep. Right. So that's, you know, so I, I would agree with you to some degree, but I, again, the caveat is there, does your team have the actual knowledge that's needed? Some of the basics. Are you asking me or just speaking in general? No, I'm speaking in general and I'm trying to get everyone to talk. Yeah. <laughs> well, come on, guys. I'm going to shut up now. Yeah. No, it's fine. I've, I've been uh, doing live streaming now for almost 10 years. And uh, Shad really shook me up. And so I have started asking myself and we've started asking questions here about how important live streaming is and uh 
one of the things that we do when we have newcomers come in is uh, we have them fill out a, uh, it's about an eight inch long card with, that has questions on both sides. And one of the questions is, how did you hear about us? Mm -hmm. And a number of our new people say online uh, or the website, but many of them say online. And uh, so I, I think that that has great value because that's where people go when they want information is they go online. And uh, uh, so that that's, you know, that that's something in favor of what we do. Uh, the question that I've been asking in the last couple of weeks, because I've had horrendous technical issues that uh, I haven't yet been able to solve, uh, is um, how important is live streaming versus recording the service, editing it, and putting it up afterwards? And uh, I don't have an answer for that, but I'm my recent experiences are 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 definitely coloring my perspective and thinking that maybe <laughs> my life would be simpler technically at least if i weren't live streaming and i i don't know i'm i'm just throwing that out there uh uh just because uh sometimes i uh end up wondering what i'm doing here so but you're yeah. still doing everything yourself, right? I'm doing everything myself. Yes, it's a one-person show. Uh, and I, I continue. And, and house, house audio and video and live streaming and editing and producing. And you bet it. <laughs> it's the whole thing. Yeah. And I continue to believe that that is a huge disadvantage that you have. And until you will solve that, I think you're putting yourself continue to put yourself in a spot and under a lot of pressure, you know, to, to do something what normally only is done with three or four people at minimum. <clears throat> and that's really, you know, I'm wondering how much of that actually influences the perception of doing live streaming. Like what, what's the size of our team now, Lane? Most weeks we have four volunteers. Yeah. So we have one camera person, one audio, one social media, one slide, and then one directing. And so my experience has always been, and to try to do everything yourself has two issues. One is you're putting yourself under a lot of pressure and you are so experienced, you can do it all yourself. I'm not doubting that at all, but you don't have any backup. The other thing is that I, as a minister, try to keep an eye out for is you're not, or that's how I see it. If I do it myself, I do not give a volunteer an opportunity to do something. Hmm. And I'll give you an example. Um, <clears throat> That's why our tech team, I think, is so strong, um, because we have about 10, 12 on rotation. About 10 now. Yeah. And it's because we continue to provide those positions. You know, it's a challenge, certainly, because they need to be trained and all that. But an example is we have a person who does the fellowship all by herself with very little help. And they, um, they, they put up this enormous spread of food every single Sunday, right? And I keep telling her, stop doing that. Stop putting up that enormous spread. I hear you, allow, man. Allow the volunteers who then miss this, you know, the smorgasbord of food every Sunday, allow the volunteers to come in. How many, how many uh, retirees would love to bake um, a cake or bake some cookies once in a while? And But if we put up the food every single Sunday 
And it's not about the cost. It's really about taking away opportunities for a congregant to do even the smallest thing. That's why we created the social media position whose only responsibility on the tech team, whose only responsibility is to monitor the social media feed and respond. That's all they do. And um, and that is also a remote capable role. So someone that is home, you know, at home, but has a decent grasp on technology can do that chat for us. That's pretty cool. Um, so it is, and I know, I know, I know your system, Owen, I know how hard, how incredibly hard it will be to train anyone. <laughs> so please don't hear this as a criticism. I'm just using you as an example. When such a big job as live streaming and house sound goes to one person it's it's you know i would see it if if you were that my ministry i would be very concerned that you will burn out eventually and i would i would do everything i could to throw people at you that have just enough knowledge to be dangerous enough to give you a hand you know even if it's just moving a camera you know Yeah, our physical situation is such that I can't uh, be a director because I can't talk because there are people sitting right in front of me uh, in the chapel and there's there's no barrier. And, uh, uh, and, and so I can't direct camera people. I've, I've tried uh, with hand gestures and but uh, it's it's really it it's easy enough to train someone if you can talk to them, and uh, tell them what shots you want, and, and that's what I used to do in Hawaii. I had two volunteer camera people at two different services, so I had four volunteers every Sunday, kept them trained and lined up, and and everything worked fine. And I I did the switching from a control room where nobody could nobody in the chapel could hear me talk. But in this case, I don't have that luxury and I can't be walled off because I have to hear the house sound because we don't have someone to operate the house for. Uh, you know, I'm sure this is all solvable. I just haven't put my mind around it. Yeah. Like we we moved our library out of a room, of a windowless room, and we started setting it up as an audio video room. Um, and... If we didn't, if we knew we will keep the property rather than sell it, I would have pushed for uh, running the cables and everything down into that room, separate separate from the sanctuary, because we do hire an audio engineer who does the house sound. And then I would have had the tech team down in the room. Because that's how I was trained at the Unity of Houston. We were in the back of the room, windowless room, and totally isolated from the service. And we were we were recording the TV production. And it felt it was a lot better because we had that disconnect. We had a completely different perception of what was going on in service. And we weren't distracted by people walking by the camera or, or anything or whispering and stuff like that. Yeah, that is an issue. I, I visited a, a mega church uh, some years ago, and that's what they had. They, they had a totally separate room where they uh, directed their, their camera people on the floor. And uh, it was like a regular TV studio in, in you know any network or, or local TV station. And it yeah. worked very well. We have been very fortunate uh, in that we have uh, attracted somebody, we have one paid staff, and that's this young man who just turned 22. And mm -hmm. uh, he has brought um, a knowledge of tech that quite frankly has, has revolutionized what we're able to do. So mm -hmm. we have any given Sunday, two of us sitting side by side in the back of the room, 
uh, we have a third person who does the slides uh, and sometimes will sit back there or, or wherever uh, he or she, it's, it's convenient for them. Uh, Mike has a role in it, obviously, in addition to uh, being the upfront guy, but um, the, the knowledge that this young man brought to us was invaluable. I mean, it's mm -hmm. just hard to measure. We're in the process now of training a, I guess I could call them replacement for some of the stuff or a lot of the stuff that I do. Uh, and again, somebody came in at the right time and uh, Mike approached them and they said, hey, yeah, I used to do something like that years ago uh, down in uh, Florida area. We're in, uh, North, we're in Northern Georgia where our church is located. So, and what we've decided to do is get even uh, another person if we can recruit them. That is that is really, uh, like I said, this, this one young man is amazing. But boy, yeah. that has helped me as well as other people. And the comments we get on our live stream are, are really uh, positive. Now, interestingly enough, we have a number of people, if Facebook statistics and YouTube statistics are to be believed, we have the majority of people who watch our streaming uh, do it Monday afternoons, sometimes on Tuesdays, which, um, which speaks to our ability to uh, attract and, and reach people beyond those who are sitting in our chairs on Sundays. Yeah, which brings us back to the question, you know, do we need a live stream or is a recording enough? So what what is your opinion on that? My opinion? Uh, uh, it's not neutral. My opinion is yes. Live streaming has the ability, and now we're getting more interactive. We put out the message, uh, if, you know, if you've got questions or um, when Mike touches on the... Uh, it, you know, there's a way to give back to Unity Church of the Mountains. And uh, we got slide then, which will go up. Um, obviously, uh, that's an important thing. Go ahead, go ahead, Mike. There are two things we do in every service, and these were both Bob's idea. Right before the service starts, we have a, a little countdown, and I speak directly to the closest camera to me. And I'm not talking to the congregation in the room. I'm talking to whoever's watching online. And I, and I just tell them how they're as much a part of the community as the people in the room. And you, you know, you're welcome here and dot, dot, dot. And you can make a prayer request in the comments. You can make a donation, et cetera. And we hear from people that they like that. And the other thing is um, at the point in the service when you know, the platform leader welcomes the new time guests and so forth. The entire congregation turns around and waves to the camera in the back and we greet the people watching at home. And we hear about that too. So yeah, that those are specific to live streaming and they actually do build connection. So thank you, Bob. Good ideas. Yeah. He's right. Having the 22-year-old the wonder kid is a... <laughs> At the same time, the same, the same will be effective for someone watching it the day later on the recording, right? They would still feel included. It, yeah. 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 It doesn't really have to be live in order for that to work, right? They, the only thing that wouldn't work is necessarily is putting in the prayer request in the comment section. So you wouldn't have someone responding to that. So that's really what's missing. And that's really the point I'm trying to make is what are the exact elements that we right. have in a live stream and are we utilizing those elements effectively that we don't have if we just do a recording? It's a fair question. Any other comments on that? Lane, you have quite a bit of experience with social media, how that works and how we have evolved or devolved. I don't know where we're at at the moment. <laughs> My dog has lots of comments about this. Okay. Um, 
That's why it was on mute. Um, we have, I mean, we consistently get around 30 people that are watching online and there are um, at least several that I personally know of that used to attend in service or, or used to attend in person. And then when COVID came around, they just did not come back. And without without an online presence of some kind, whether that would be live streaming or videos, they wouldn't have a connection to Unity Fort Worth anymore. So um, it's positive in my opinion from that perspective, but there, um, from a live perspective, um, there is a sense of camaraderie between the people that regularly attend on one platform or another, mostly on Facebook. Um, there, there, you know, because there will be friends, uh, people that are friends with each other on Facebook, and they'll see each other online, and they'll say hi and that kind of thing. Um, there's not a lot of cross talk that happens um, in the chat, but there is sometimes, and it's nice to see that online to to um, see people connecting and being like, "Oh, I haven't seen you in a long time. It's great to see you here." That kind of thing. Um, so that's a, that's a positive in my opinion for having a live stream because they wouldn't necessarily have the, make those connections with each other, um, being at home and not having that opportunity con to connect at the same time every Sunday. Lane, I had a question, uh, regarding that. Do you have anybody in the booth that, uh, responds to that crosstalk or, uh, any comments as as the ministry itself uh, engaging with those comments? Yes, we um we stream through restream, and they have a chat interface okay. that allows us to send messages um, to both platforms at the same time, but also to reply uh, to the conversations that are going on. So uh, so we're able to interact with everybody, and that and that being an online service means that people that are at home can also do that. We don't have very many right now volunteers that have taken advantage of being able to do that, that chat, the social media job remotely, but it is something that is possible for someone at home to do. And they may even have, in my opinion, a deeper connection to doing it well because they're part they've been they're one on of the receiving end of that and so they've already been part of that conversation okay yeah i i wrote a a job description for a uh what did i call it uh digital digital greeter um and because we have, have like the that. ones that sit right outside the the sanctuary and and greet people and and things like that and my thought back in the COVID days was, well, let's just make it digital so that somebody, the, the tech person who's actually switching the cameras and, and doing things like that, doesn't have the time to, to constantly monitor the, the the stream. So at least from a yeah. content. We, we made the decision long time ago that social media, in order to effectively utilize it, needs a dedicated volunteer position. Yeah. You know, because there's so much more that goes into it. Um, like, you know, we might have last minute changes to the to the order of service, or we might no, have really and and you know, and then they need to post link at the very specific time, uh, so that it's coordinates with announcements and other elements of the order of service. And um, yeah, so it really helps to have a social media person for sure. Is your social media person a paid position or a volunteer? Volunteer. Well, it's paid when I do it, but yeah. other than that, no, it's volunteer. <laughs> and it's an it's an entry. Like you know, you need to see it from the complexity. From the complexity, it's actually <clears throat> one thing I always was was keen on, and still am, is that I even allow complete newbies to join to to join a team that they may not be familiar with. Is one of the things a lot, there's people that, you know, there's programmers and techie people that the last thing they want to do is volunteer in a technological position at the church because it, they see it as a way to recharge and they don't want to do what they do all day long, 
right? There's others who say, no, I'd love to utilize my technological skills. And then on the other hand, you have people who are a bit hesitant when it comes to technology, but wouldn't mind being part of a tech team because they want to get a little bit more familiar. So social media position um, is probably one of the easiest entry points. Mm -hmm. It takes away a lot of the complexity and a lot of people already kind of have an idea how Facebook works anyway. Yeah. I I, I just wanted to get clear. It, it seemed to me like uh, you were saying, Lane, that uh, uh, people who were uh, watching the online service were communicating with each other. And uh, are you doing a Zoom for that? Or, or are you just uh, live streaming to like... Facebook and, and YouTube. We're live streaming to Facebook and YouTube and they're interacting in the chat for that. Got it. Okay. Thank you. Because I think the Zoom room idea takes away too much from the service. Yeah, well, we did do Zoom, I think a few times and then um, quickly abandoned that because nobody can talk during the service anyway without interrupting others. So mm -hmm. they're all muted. And it would just happen in the chat anyway. There wasn't a significant difference um, in having that online fellowship time during the service. Mike and Jean-Marie, let me ask the question. Uh, do you from the from the pulpit, sorry for using that word, uh, engage in any of the comments uh, that you're made aware of or is there an acknowledgement uh, of individuals or the people uh, during COVID, uh, we actually, I would get a list, uh, my, my tech guy would write a list of all of the people who made a comment or who checked in on Facebook. And then during the offertory, uh, I almost played romper room uh, from from the stage and said, hey, we want to acknowledge, we're, we're blessed for the people that are uh, here in the sanctuary, but we also want to acknowledge uh, Barbara from Louisville and, and, you know, so and so. I'm just wondering, is there anything now that we're post-COVID that John marie you do or, or Mike, you do? Go, up, go ahead, Mike. You're muted. You're still muted, Mike. I think is also connected. a slow, very slow connection. Uh, oh, that's a, I was saying such smart stuff too. What a bummer. Yeah. <clears throat> um, yes, I was just to your answer to answer your question, Randy. Uh, yes, I um, invite the people in my little pre service um, message to the folks at home to please participate in the chat. And it doesn't happen very often, but uh, from time to time, somebody will say something that, you know, uh, asks for a response and either Bob or Sky or some somebody on the tech team will text that to me. And uh, I'll, and sometimes I miss the text, but sometimes I'll pick it up and, and address it. And in the case of uh, something like a town hall meeting, that happens a fair amount. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, town hall meeting, we have figured out before service, after service, I think that's no issue. We kind of have different ways of dialogue. Um, because we're we're transitioning right now from one building into a temporary place, we uh, uh, one of one of the ideas I had. I think I mentioned it to you, Lane. Maybe, maybe I was to you as well, Eldon. Is to have the stage monitor have like a little ticker, like you see on CNN, that would kind of show the comments that are coming in, so that I could actually even address it during the during the message. And I think that will be most effective. That would, you know, that's so, a great idea. So that to in in a way to have. Whatever comes in through Facebook or through Restream, Facebook and YouTube, I could actually just address that. You know, if someone, 
if I pick up, if I pay attention, look up there and see it, um, and then spontaneously decide to integrate it into my talk, that probably will be the most organic. Um, mm -hmm. But we haven't really, I haven't really told Elden or Lane to, to really go for it and, and figure it out because we have so much other stuff to do right now. But that's probably one of the things that I can easily see would improve the, the experience for those who are at home. Um, one of the things that I'm getting better at, but I'm definitely not so good when I'm in the middle of message mode is um, I did a couple of exercises uh, on a few Sundays and uh, one of the exercises actually went down with the microphone and asked people after the exercise how they felt. And I forgot to just simply ask the tech team, hey, is there, are there, you know, or address the online people, please type in the comments yeah. and then ask the tech team to kind of communicate those comments. Mm -hmm. I can definitely get better at that. And I think that will be so important to do. Um, and, and, or if I, if I address a question, um, doing the message, which I sometimes do not just address it to the, uh, the people in person, but immediately say, and I want you, you know, those who are at home, please type it in the comment too, and then really work out with the tech team. And, and Lane, you already know how to do this doing town hall or doing, outside service you just kind of lane has a way to push the button and then just go on the big speaker <laughs> oh um we have an online audience question or we have you know so we already have the technology it's really on me to be in that flow um and then and then make it happen and not forget vmix the video production system that we use actually has a module that will uh, will include the social media, the the chat stream, as part of the uh, <clears throat> as part of another input. Um, so the I mean, we you know we could easily just I could easily put my phone on the lectern and just watch it too, right? But I well, don't I, do. I don't like having my I give my phone usually to my wife who sits in the audience. I don't even like to have the phone on stage. Um, I'm sure there's ways of doing it. Um, and so the technology is here. I'm sure we can do it. Um, and I, I just realized that I still often miss an opportunity to engage, which makes a difference. We also use Restream. And with the two of us back in the back of the room, uh, one of us has an eyeball on that restream area where you can see a message coming in. Now, typically the message is, hi, uh, so-and-so from, uh, I'm on vacation now down in uh, Tampa, but uh, really liking Mike's uh, message. And we will, one of us will type something back, sure, glad to see you here today. Uh, enjoy the rest of the service. Mm -hmm. Again, very generic, but again, it it just fosters what I think you all are saying, and that connection is so very important for people who are not necessarily in that room. And that's where I think that's a clear pro for keeping the live streaming going versus just providing a recording. Hmm. But. It's definitely new. It's definitely something where the ministers, the minister, the tech team, everyone needs to work together to figure out a, a dialogue rather than a monologue, because I think it is the dialogue that makes the live stream more effective versus the recording. Anything that could be done as a monologue, uh, I mean, I often address, you know, yeah, those at home, you know, think about this too. That mm -hmm. is as effective doing live stream as it is on the recording. But when we start interacting with each other, that's where the recording will fall behind the live stream. Yep. And here's another thing. This is for you, Owen. 
I'm just so concerned about you burning out. <laughs> when you in the beginning said, sometimes you, you know, you wonder if you should just record it and then edit it and then publish it. What I love about live streaming is you flip the switch on and then you turn it off and then it's done. There's no editing, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, that that's, that's your perspective, but actually behind the scenes, there's a lot of work as, as everyone who's had their fingers on the buttons knows. Uh, Not in that case, though, and though, I think that's, that's just you. We literally turn on the live stream, turn off the live stream, and none of us goes in because I don't allow him to, to go in and change the live stream unless something is really messed up. Oh, right? yeah. No, what, 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 I, what, I, what I'm referring to is what Eldon and uh, Lane do very busily during the service while the live stream is going on. And that's that's serious work. <laughs> yeah, but I'm I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about that would still be the case even if you didn't do the live stream. Right, exactly. And what I'm addressing is what I'm addressing is if you don't do the live stream and then you start editing your footage in order to put it up as a as a recording, you're adding a whole bunch of editing hours that you don't necessarily do when you just do the live stream. That's the whole point I'm making. Yeah, well, yes, the, the additional work for the live stream, if you're doing your switching and everything real time is minimal. That's very true. Yeah. One of the things we do is, yeah, we do the same thing, flip the switch on, and let it go but then after the service is over uh my video guy does it at home so he's not sitting here uh he'll use adobe uh, premiere pro and he'll edit out or he'll edit uh just the meditation and just the lesson and then we post those uh on youtube and we also include the link uh in our Wednesday uh, newsletter and we get uh, other people and it's also discoverable on YouTube anyway, but at least uh, it's again, additionally discoverable. Yeah. We, we do the same thing. No, we don't. The only thing that's being done is our audio engineer takes the audio and cuts from message to meditation. That's the only, and he does fix some of the audio stuff because he's an engineer. He does it automatically. He does it right then and there after the service takes him, I think about 10 minutes or so. Yeah. No, I would, I, I don't see the, I, unless you guys can convince me, but I don't see the, the advantage of having having a tech team or anyone put any additional time into editing because it's so easy for someone if they want to skip something they just go to the message and if they want to skip it to the meditation they go to the meditation why do the extra work and piece those things out and then well, publish it let me let me ask you this then uh i've I, in my research the last couple of weeks uh, I'm looking at Podbean uh, and to do for podcasting. And I believe I saw that Unity of Fort Worth actually has a podcast. That's what I just said. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I've seen you do a, a Monday message or something that's about 45 seconds long. Uh, but do you also, I haven't spent too much time on it. Uh, but you also have. I appreciate, I appreciate. I appreciate um, your interest in Unity Fort Worth, and let me put in a donation link just in case <laughs> you feel called to. No. But are you also putting in the uh, the the whole service as well? Not on the puppy, no. So we, we use do for we do for special services right. sometimes like concerts or ones that are like rock and roll Sunday where we have a very musically heavy concert. 
and not much of a message or something like that, then we might post the whole service for that. But okay, we, like, um, we, sir, like, we only post the sermon and the meditation. Christmas Eve candlelight, I think, is the full one. Mm -hmm. uh, Ash Wednesday is a full one. Good Friday is a full one. Everything else on Popbean is just cut. Um, does he include the opening prayer? He might include. He the does opening now prayer. that it's now that it's uh, the new sequence. Yeah, we we changed our order of, uh, order of service. We no longer have an opening prayer. I basically come up and do prayer, uh, prayer message, and meditation all in one go. And so he is cutting it that way now. Okay. Um, and Poppy, you know, we publish on Pandora. No, yeah, we are on Pandora, right? Amazon Music, we are on Spotify. Pandora, Am yeah, Amazon, Apple, Spotify, all the places. Yeah. But you are using Podbean. Do you feel? I, I have another question about the music, but how do you? How do you? Not rate. How do you rate Pod? How is your experience with Podbean? Good. I have no complaints about it. I don't yeah. have much experience with anything else to compare it against, but yeah. it is yeah. it is easy I, I to made use the, and convenient. Uh, I made that choice a long time ago before anyone else had the chance to give their input. So <laughs> <laughs> I had a friend who figured it out and they said, go with Pop Bean. It's the, it's the easiest that they were able to work with. It was easy, to, easy enough to set up. Okay. My uh, question then too, that I have a call into Sue Riley about um, if we were to include the music, how do you report that to Empower or, or we have licenses with C, uh, Christian Copyright Solutions and Empower? Do you also report those, the music that, okay. Yes. We use Elvanto, our, our management system, church management system is Elvanto. And we have a, uh, a service planning system that includes a song library. So our order of service has the songs in there. Yeah. And then Lane exports it. And I think you need to do some work on it for the individual platforms, right? Yes. Yeah. Which license? We report to two. We use Christian Copyright Services because they have a mm -hmm. lot of the like popular songs. And Sue Riley. To do. Yeah. And then we use Empower as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I talked to Sue a while ago about doing something other than Excel spreadsheets, and they they're they're working on it. Yeah, when you have a service planning system, I mean, our service planning system. Again, I don't recommend Delvanto to anyone. It's a huge learning curve, but once you figured it out, it really it really provides a lot of good information. I mean, Lane, I think you have. Lane is even um, putting on the slide the licensing specific mm -hmm. song license number. And that's all in our database with each song that we're using. So when it's exported, oh. it's not. <laughs> Why is um, it not? Oops, sorry, um, Lane. <laughs> Elvanto is really set up to work with CCLI, which yeah. uh, uh, we don't use because it has very traditional Christian type music on it. Um, so, so everything that you, uh, the song, the song library and everything integrates really well with CCLI, but if you don't use it, it's not a lot of use to you. So I created a database in Airtable to help me, oh. uh, organize all that information. So how much time does it take every, every quarter, I think is reporting, right? Um, I add songs week to week and it takes me about. 20 minutes to get it all exported and reported. Yeah, I've thought we, we use Planning Center and they're also CCLI and um, never the twain shall meet. One of the things that I've thought about, haven't had time to even look into it, was get with the Planning Center developers to see if using AI, if we could write a script that would take their export planning centers export and put it into CCS's format to upload. But that's let that's us know when you figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. That's 
<laughs> it's one of those things after I restring the 25 stage lights. Quite frankly, at the very beginning, when Sue Riley told me what the requirements are of reporting, I said, you know, I'm happy for you to have the money, but I don't care to report. It's too much work. And um, <laughs> because at that point, we just, I didn't see that who would actually do the reporting, you know, um, which is really, it it becomes more of a headache than the $100, $150 a year in, in Empower Music's case. But we have the same issue with the, the other license. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. As a new, newbie who's not familiar with Podbean at all, what type of uh, reaction or feedback are you getting? From Podbean directly? Well, from those that watch it. We don't get any reaction through Podbean. No. Podbean is more of a, um, a platform that allows you to upload your audio file. Right. I think you can do video, but you, you just upload your podcast stuff and then they distribute it to uh, all the connections that you make. But it doesn't necessarily provide like, um, like a feedback in like you would, you would have in Facebook, especially not, you know, but there may be some feedback settings. I don't know, Lane, do you remember? Um, as far as I know, there's not a way for people to like comment on stuff. So we don't get direct feedback. We get statistics about who, how many downloads we get and which countries they're in and that kind of thing. And that's actually really helpful to have. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We have uh, almost close, we, we're getting closer to, we have 76, 7,658 downloads. Wow. But are we publishing the Metaphysical Minute as well? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So I do something called the Metaphysical Minute, which is like 90 seconds or less, um, more in most cases. <laughs> then Lane or, or Andy don't have to edit it. Um, it's just uh, based on the daily word. It's just a metaphysical message based on the daily word. And that's that's... Um, published on Thursdays, but we'll actually text it, text the link. And texting has be been very successful for us. Do you have the latest stats? How many signed up for text? It goes far beyond our last I checked, it was 390. Yeah, close to 400. Yeah. So when you say text, you mean SMS? Mm -hmm. Yes. And what what is your content just links there's three things i do right now actually we do four now but on a weekly basis we do a monday affirmation that i write um we do a thursday metaphysical minute which is a video recording i just turn on zoom um and talk for a minute or a minute and a half about the specific topic nowadays i use quotes because that helps with the hashtags and popularity and the views um so i might be talking about i don't know um love and then i use a quote from mother teresa and then um our marketing person she takes it then and puts the instagram and TikTok video together and publishes it on those platforms with the specific hashtags, such as hashtag Mother Teresa. So anyone typing in hashtag Mother Teresa will then get to my video, recognizes the quote, but then here's a metaphysical message on the topic, right? And then on Saturdays, we do quotes, spiritual quotes from individuals. And then once a month, we do a... What are we calling it, Lane? Community check-in. A community check-in. So we ask a congregation leader. Usually we're looking for the leaders, younger individuals mostly, and those who have stepped into leadership in our congregation. And they're basically just sharing on video like this, 
uh, what's going to happen this month in, in the community. And we published that on the first of the month. And all those different ways of being, so the affirmation is texted just with a text. The metaphysical minute is a link that goes to Instagram. And the quote is just the text of the quote. And then the community engagement thing is a link to the video. And what, what platform are you using for the text? Uh, Twilio. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, both of you talked over each other. We, well, we send it through um, Elvanto, but it is it goes through Twilio. It's through a cert. It's uh, okay. that's what services Elvanto. Okay, I know yeah. Mailchimp just has been pushing SMS um, significantly. Um, we've got another application called Dial My Calls that we use for voice. We we broadcast uh, twice a month a uh, 60 second prayer um, and they have been doing text as well. Uh, haven't, haven't thought about doing anything other than that. Yeah. It's been really popular. I have actually quite a few minister friends who signed up for our texts, especially the Monday affirmation. They say it's really, it really helps them just to take a moment to step back and, um, you know, just receive rather than give all yeah. the time. Um, oh, my, wife's, my wife has work friends who keep telling her, except, oh, I love John Marie's affirmation. I really needed it this Monday. So like, it really spread out. You know, we, we, we probably from our own community, how many do we maybe have 50 people signed up or more? Mm, it's probably more than that, but I'm not more than that. sure how many. Or even if, even if it's 200, um, we definitely have a lot more. A large portion of it is um, students who have taken courses with us and got on the list and um, people who have signed up to do USCR calls and um, got on the list that way. Mm-hmm. And I think it really ties into it. It really is something that um, my my wife's work friends, they're all like Gen Z, Gen Y. It really fits into their lifestyle. It's a very simple, very quick thing that they can do on that particular day. And it's not sitting through an entire service. Mm -hmm. right? It's just something they can do for their own spirituality. Think about it. It takes a couple of minutes and then they get back to their lives. This is interesting because I've been getting texts from uh, Unity of Bend, Oregon, which are so much spiritual and con. They're more tomorrow. The topic will be, or Friday night we have a concert with dot dot dot. Uh, and I've you been, you know, wondering if either of those approaches could be useful. It's useful for you, is it? We're not Did doing. Say no. No, because the text is designed to be in service to the community. This is not self service. Yeah. I can see not a promo thing. It's not a promo thing because I would stop those. That's a personal decision. If someone starts texting me, that, for see, that own, was going to be my other question. Do you get any pushback on it? No, because we don't do it right. We we don't promote anything. It's really only. Here is what we have to offer. Take it or leave it. We don't that ask. For very yeah. That's a. We very do. I mean, it does shift because people will unsubscribe, but then we'll get new subscribers and it always stays between 375 and 390 is where I normally see it. And the Instagram follower and TikTok followers, how many do we have now anywhere? We used to be just between oh, okay. 30 and 50, and now we're in the hundreds, right? Mm -hmm. But we're not, we're not millions and, you know, sensations or anything. We're not, we didn't we go. We haven't viral. gone viral. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not you, All right, guys, we're coming up to the hour. Uh, what's our next topic?
what to look forward to in 2024. Well, our next meeting will be in 2024. Yeah, we can do that. What to look forward to technologically wise in 2024. Shall we do that? Sure. Okay. Please. And then we'll go and probably go down rabbit holes anyway, as we always do. <laughs> right. Hey guys, um, Merry Christmas, uh, happy holidays, um, Hanukkah, whatever, you know, New Year. And those of, I mean, all of us are in ministry, whether you're a minister or not, right? So really appreciate all of you. Take care of yourself, especially during this busy, uh, busy season. And uh, we will see you next year. Bye.